and Lord for your goodness and your mercy for your love and kindness that you have shown toward us we give you praise we honor you we worship we adore you we magnify you for thou art our Savior and our Redeemer we ask today that you would anoint these lips of clay that we might speak as an oracle of Christ and not just as a man that you would hide us behind your glorious cross and cover us with your precious blood allowing no flesh to glory in your sight we'll give you all the glory and the honor and take no credit to ourselves for anything that you do in Jesus name we ask these favors Amen and amen. You may be seated. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life. Singing more to his name. Sing and glory to his name, precious name. Sing and glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within Down at the cross where he took me in Singing glory Oh, I'm singing glory to his precious name singing glory to his name I love his name oh that to my heart was the blood of life singing glory come on everybody oh I'm singing glory to his precious name singing glory to his name, I love his name, that to my heart was the blood of life, singing glory to his name, oh yes. If you would open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 14 and I would like for you to look with me verses 22 through 33 Matthew's gospel chapter 14 if you have that say man uh, let's read it together. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water 
to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind bosterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. All right. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his glorious word. I want you especially to notice verse 30. But when he saw the wind bosterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, uh, save me. Uh, a cry in desperation. God bless you, ushers. Here is um, the noted apostle Peter. And he is in a situation where he recognizes that salvation for him can come from only one source and that is from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now when we deal with the topic of salvation, the statement, Lord save me, uh, initially we would think automatically of one uh, being saved from sin, uh, but I believe that at this point the Lord Jesus has already forgiven the sins uh, of Peter as he has forgiven the sins of all of those who would be his followers. And that is always the first act of salvation, that he would save his people from sin. But salvation involves not only uh, being saved from sin, but we are constantly needing his help to be saved from various situations. Uh, somebody that's in here this morning listening at me, uh, you need to be saved, but your salvation is from uh, the onslaught uh, of a, a debilitating illness that has seized your body. And you need God to save you from the ravages of that sickness, illness, or disease. Somebody else, they are sinking with financial reverses. One while you were walking upon the waters of your uh, financial circumstances. But some things have happened. And now you see that uh, whereas you used to could... Uh, pay all of your bills and uh, spend money for a few luxuries and have money left over. Now you find yourself at a point where just to be able to make ends meet uh, is becoming difficult and you're crying out for God to save you from some uh, financial reverses. But regardless of what the situation is, it is always admirable to recognize that your salvation will not come from any other source other than from Jesus Christ. Uh, one of the old songs we used to sing when I was a youngster growing up was all that I need is in Jesus. He satisfies joy. He supplies life would be worthless without him all things and I know that sounds a little bit difficult to some folk how can you say that you can find all things in Christ but as you read God's glorious word you will find that this is exactly what the Bible teaches that you can not only find salvation in him but you can find healing in him Jehovah Rapha who is our great physician uh, you can also find that in his own words there in Matthew 6 and 33, he says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all 
things, all these things, talking about material things, will be added unto you. Uh, in Philippians 4.19, the apostle Paul says, but my God shall supply A-L-L, -L, that little three-letter word that includes everything and excludes nothing. My God shall supply all your needs according to what? His riches in glory. How? By Christ Jesus. Everything we need. One of the worst mistakes that anybody can make is to turn their back on Jesus. Oh my God. I tell you that when you keep him in his rightful place. Uh, I recall the story that they uh, gave of a man who uh, he was trying to get some things done and his little child was so busy and active and always getting in his way. And so the man decided, I know what I'll do. Uh, I got this puzzle. Uh, he'll have to spend some time working the puzzle. So he gave the uh, boy the puzzle knowing that was going to keep him busy all the rest of the afternoon and he still probably wouldn't complete it. In a few minutes, the boy brought the puzzle back to him and said, Daddy, here it is. He said, how, how in the world, as complicated as this puzzle is, how did you work it so fast? He said, well, you see, on the back of this puzzle, that was a picture of Jesus. And, and once I got Jesus together, then everything else fell in place. And, and you see, when we can really give Jesus his proper place, you don't have to worry. Everything else will fall in place. Let me just touch upon this story a little bit and then we're going to the communion table. I might uh, deal with it a little more extensively at the 11 o'clock service. But we find here that Peter has just along with the rest of the disciples completed a great task which I spoke with you about on last Sunday which was the feeding of the 5,000 men not counting the women or the children and uh, Jesus at the end of this feeding he sent his disciples away he told them to go to the other side of the sea. And he himself went up into a mountain by himself to pray. Now, here Jesus is up in the mountain praying. His disciples are on board the ship en route to the other side. But as it will happen, when you are sailing upon life's troubled sea, you are going to encounter some storms. They encounter the storm while en route to the other side. And what is Jesus doing? He's up in the mountain praying. He's praying and the church is in trouble. He's in solitude, and they are about to be swallowed up, so they think. Now, if they had really recognized who Jesus was, they would not have had any fear because he had said, go to the other side. And you've got to understand that it doesn't matter how many tempestuous waves may come against you. If Jesus said you are going to the other side, I got to tell you, <laughs> you're going to make it to the other side. Winds may blow and waters may dash. Fear may grip your heart. But if the Lord said that your destination is the other side, Tell every demon, get out of the way. Because the master said that I'm going to the other side. Now, here they are, caught in a storm. 
And while they are caught in the storm, the wind is blowing and uh, the waters are dashing in the boat. And Jesus is still up in the mountain praying. Now, you got to understand that when they finish the work of feeding the multitude and sending them away, it was still day, probably mid-afternoon. But we understand from the reading of the narrative that once they are in the ship and headed for the other side, it's evening. The shadows of darkness are starting to loom. And here they are in the first watch of the night. And the first watch of the night is between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. And here the storm sets in in the first watch of the night. And Jesus didn't do a thing about it. Sometimes it looks like when your trouble first come on you, he doesn't do a thing about it. The first watch of the night turned into the second watch. 9 p.m. until midnight. Jesus still didn't show up. By this time, you would imagine they are saying, Lord, how long am I going to have to endure? How long am I going to have to battle against this storm? But the second watch gave way to the third watch. <laughs> From midnight until 3 a.m. And Jesus still didn't come to their rescue. He's yet in the mountain. But the one thing you have to understand is that when you read this story from all of the corresponding gospels, you'll get the impression that although Jesus is in the mountain and they are out in the midst of the sea, he is somewhere in the mountain at a vantage point where he can see what's going on out in the middle of the sea. And you got to understand that even though he might not have come to your rescue, he is at a point where he is looking on and he is not ignorant of what you're going through. Oh, I know you'll say that, that nobody cares and that my friends have deceived me and my loved ones have left me and here I am battling the odds of life by myself and look like nobody cares but I want you to know that Jesus is he's looking on I, I think you need to tell about three people around you. Uh, you don't be discouraged he is looking at what's happening in your life oh bless the name of the Lord he was watching he did not respond in the first watch he didn't come to see them in the second watch. Didn't even come in the third watch. But the third watch turns into the fourth watch. And the fourth watch of the night is from 3 a.m. until 6 a.m. When I was just a little boy growing up, I heard the old folks say, the darkest hour is just before the break of day. And when the storm was at its worst, the wind had become boisterous and the waters dashing in the boat looked like there was no hope. And all of a sudden, when the hope appears, even the hope is scary. For here comes Jesus doing something that no man had ever been reported as doing. Here comes Jesus doing something that no human is even expected to do. He comes to them walking on the water. <laughs> oh my God. And now, not only are they worn out from battling the waves, but now they are absolutely scared. I mean, plain old scared. They, they look out. Man, do, do you see? Do you see what I see? There ain't no land around here. That, that must be. Old folks say, I hate. 
Some of y'all don't, don't remember it, but, you know, back in the day, uh, Deacon Cole and some others remember when we still had two newspapers and the commercial appeal had a character that was a cartoon character, but he was supposed to be representative of a black man. They called him Hambone. And, and, and Hambone said once in one of those cartoons said, some folks say there ain't no Hanks, but I saw something. I read for it and it won't there. It read for me and I won't there. <laughs> They didn't know what to think. Hear of the Spirit. Sometimes when the Lord sends you your help, you get scared of your help. Somebody shows up that's, that's able to help you in, in the job where you're working and first thing you scared of uh oh they brought them in here to take my job sometime all God's doing is giving you some help and you gotta understand that, that when God gives you anything you don't have to walk around in fear always afraid that everything is, is against you and everything is gonna tear you down here comes their help and they're scared of their help until after a while, somebody said, oh, I, I recognize that form. That, that's not a disembodied spirit. That's Jesus. And when the disciples agreed, Peter, who was always a little bit skeptical and a little bit quick to speak, he hollered out and said, Master, if it's you, bid me come to you walking on the water. Now here is a bold statement. Lord, I know you can do it. But if you can do it, I know the power that you've got. Demonstrate some of that power and let me do what you do. Jesus said that if you believe on me, the works that I do, you'll do. And you'll even do greater, meaning you'll do more of what I'm doing. Because I can't be here long. I'm going back to the Father. But if you believe on me, I'll let you do it. And you'll do even greater, numerically speaking. Peter said, let me come. And look at what Jesus does. He doesn't do anything but spread his word out like a magic carpet on the sea and simply says, come. Some of us are waiting on the Lord to come down here and literally grip us and put us over here and put us over there. But he's given us something that's powerful enough for you to get to wherever you need to get. He's given us his word. If you've got enough faith to step out on his word, I declare you can walk in areas that seem to be impossible. Look at Peter. He steps out of the boat. I heard somebody say the boat represented the comfort zone. Even though they were in a storm, we were still in a comfort zone. Sometimes the Lord insists you got to get out of your comfort zone. Hallelujah. He stepped out of his comfort zone and I don't believe that he really stepped on the wave. I believe he stepped on the word. Jesus said, come and I'm going to stand on the word. And he had two things in his favor. He had his feet on the word and he had his eyes planted on Jesus. Tell somebody, fix your eyes on Jesus and plant your feet on the word and impossible things will become possible. Mm. I, I'm going to move from that. But, but I got, you've got to get that one. Look at somebody again and tell them, 
keep your feet planted on the word and keep your eyes on Jesus and even the impossible will become possible hallelujah as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus and kept his feet on the word he was able to walk even with the waves jumping but see this is the nature of your enemy this is the nature of trouble it has a tendency to make you take your eyes off of Jesus the wind now it had been whipping it had been blowing evidently with a steady gait but all of a sudden Peter hears the whistling of a sudden gust of wind that must have been different to what he'd been hearing all night and the Bible said when he saw the wind was bosterous in other words when the wind began to whip by his ear he took his eye off Jesus and tried to look at the wind. You got to watch it when people are telling you, honey, you can't do this. You can't do that. And here you are doing it all the time. You can't support a family with that little bit of money. And you've been doing it for so many years. You can't do this and you can't do that. And the next thing you know, you start thinking about what they said. And you take your eyes off of Jesus. The one who is able to take a little bit. And little become much in his hand. When you take your eyes off of him. And trouble begins to look bigger than it really is. When you take your eyes off of him. And the next thing your feet slide off of his word. The only thing that will happen is that you will do like Peter. The Bible said beginning, and I like the word beginning. He didn't wait until the water got up around his waist. He didn't wait till the water was on his chin. He didn't wait until the water got over his head. But when he felt it moving from his ankle up toward his knee, he said, I, I'm not going to wait for the outcome, but right now I'm going to call on help from the one who is able, beginning to sink. Somebody in here listening to me, you just beginning. You haven't gone under. But you know it's not like it used to be. I don't feel like I used to. I, I don't have the money that I used to. Things are not as good as they used to be. I haven't gone under. But I feel myself beginning to sink. You better do like Peter and said before I slip any further Lord save me I'm gonna quit but the Bible said immediately the Lord didn't let him go no further but as soon as he had sense enough to cry the Lord had mercy enough to deliver immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. Mm -hmm. 
lift your hands up and just say, I feel a lifting. I'm going to my seat. But the old folk knew the secret. That's why they said, Father. I stretch my hand to thee. No Help. Mama can't do it. Father can't do it. Spouse can't do it. Siblings can't do it. Co workers can't do it. Nobody but Jesus can lift me. Nobody but Jesus can save me. No other help I know. I don't know who it is, but when David got in trouble, he said, I'm going to lift up my eyes. <laughs> Peter got in trouble, he lifted his hands. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody, you need to lift your eyes and lift your hands to Jesus. He's the only one that can lift you up. Back. But 
Gracious Father, God, we just thank you today. God, we just thank you, God, again for your son, Jesus. God, we thank you for his precious blood, Lord Jesus. Blood that has the power to save, power to wash and make clean, the power to heal our bodies. And God, we just thank you right now. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Woo! Thank you for his sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we, were with, when we were with sin in our lives, Christ died for the ungodly. God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died. And God, we thank you for this time. God, even as we entered in this time, take it from his natural to his spiritual use. Let it heal our bodies, Lord Jesus. And God, right now, we thank you again for the privilege to stand here in your sight. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Amen.
Then he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and said, this is my body that was broken for you. Let us all eat. same and also he took the cup after supper saying this cup of the new testament in my blood for the office you drink in the remembrance of me for the office you eat of this bread and drink of this cup you do show forth the lord's death until he comes shall we drink Our deacons shall come at this time and missionaries will take your places and we shall all eat of our Lord's broken body and drink of his shed blood.
We say to our visiting friends that you are welcome to partake of communion with us. The Lord does not have a separate body for the Church of God in Christ and another for the Baptists and another for the Methodists and another for the Apostolics. But he says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. And if you know that you are truly a believer in Jesus Christ, we welcome you to share communion with us. So everyone on the main level, you may stand at this time on the main level. The ushers will lead you out from your right. You'll come and receive the bread. You'll receive the cup. Then you'll discard the cup with the missionary and continue back to your seat on the left side of your section. Those of you who are in the risers, when the elements are before you, the ushers will lead your section into the line. And you do not need to stand until your section is ready to be served in the risers.
being served in the rises. Praise the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a hand of praise, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to, at this time, extend the invitation, opening the door of the church, that if there is one person in this building who doesn't know Jesus and the pardoning of your sins, uh, if you're present and you're already saved, but you believe that this is where the Lord would have you to cast your lot in membership. The door of the church is open and all you need to do is get up from wherever you are and walk down the nearest aisle. Though your sins be as scarlet, according to the prophet Isaiah, they shall be made white as snow. May be as crimson, but they shall be as wool. All you need to do is come to Jesus just like you are. Weary, wounded, and sad. You will find in him a resting place. God bless you, young man.
Is there another? Ooh, I Bless you, my sister. It's all to thee, my blessed Savior. Is there another? Bless you, my sister. The door of the church is open. This is your time. There's another one, it's not too late. The door is open. Come and be saved. Come and make this your church. My blessed, my blessed Savior. Oh, I surrender. To thee, my blessed, is there another? All right. Well, give the Lord a hand of praise. Oh, I'm glad to know y'all love me enough to give me such a warm hand. Now give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory, 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 glory! <laughs> Worthy of all praise! Glory to God. Ah, ba, ba, ba. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Well, it's time now for the ministry of giving. Deacons are coming. This is the first Sunday in this month of February. And I trust that everybody will start this month off right.